guys, Shane Sarnes with DroidMotorX.com, and today I'm going to do a full review of CyanogenMod 10.1, that's Android 4.2.1 for the Verizon Galaxy Note 2. It is finally official thanks to the development of S. Bryson, who has attacked the bugs in his alpha build, and he's finally made it stable enough for official nightly releases by Team Signage and mine. So uh, congratulations to him for that. This is also excellent news because this means that we're going to have an awesome base ROM for other development. Even KJAR from Team Gummy is back in uh, the game developing his own ROM. Um, so big shout outs to Spryson for getting this development official for the Verizon Galaxy Note 2. Uh, so what we want to do is kind of jump into the bugs list. There's not many here, uh, but this is a nightly build. We haven't even released a we haven't even reached a stable build quite yet. So there's just a few here. Uh, Bluetooth in-call audio quality is poor. I haven't tested that myself because I normally don't use Bluetooth when I'm in a call. They say that GPS is flaky, but there's a fix for that. You can turn off Wi-Fi uh, and mobile location access, uh, which should allow it to work. And then low speakerphone volume. So, you know, whenever you turn on the speakerphone, there's going to be low volume. There was one other little bug that I found, which is just a theming bug. So if we go to the keyboard, um, if we, you can kind of see that it makes a little square around. It just doesn't look as clean on the keyboard. Now, some keys will do it and some keys won't, but I don't know if you can even see that. It's such a minor thing. Um, but I did notice that little bug there. And other than that, just playing with this ROM, I have not really found any other bugs. It's very fast, very fluid. As you guys can see, it moves very quickly. And of course, it does have all of the uh, customizations that you've come to know and appreciate from CyanogenMod 10. Uh, it's bringing Android 4.2.1 to your Verizon Galaxy Note 2 long before Verizon could ever bring that update to you. So we'll go into settings real quick. And we'll go to About Phone. We see that the Android version is 4.2.1, and uh, there's our build number and our uh, kernel there as well. So go back to the app drawer, and you can see that this comes with Apollo, comes with the 4.2 camera, comes with DSP manager, it comes with file manager, um, and it also comes with Torch, which is really nice. If we go over to the widgets, it comes with the clock app. So uh, CyanogenMod had the Cronus application, but somebody else had already developed an application that was totally unrelated to this one that was called Cronus. So uh, instead of finding any kind of litigation, Team CyanogenMod turned it to clock. Uh, but anyways, it's a really cool widget here that has weather uh, and other information, calendar information, all in the clock. Uh, so that is a very nice widget to use. And we have our power control widget there as well. So we'll go into settings and we'll look at our customizations. We have some launcher customizations here. Uh, this is just a Trey Boucher launcher. If we go into home screen, we can add a transition effect. And I like the cube out. Uh, you can also change the number of default screens. And you can change the grid size to allow for more applications on the home screen. So that's pretty cool. You can remove the persistent search bar. And you can hide icon labels just to give your home screen a more clean and crisp look. If we go into the lock screen, uh, there's several screen security settings. You can change the background. Uh, you can turn on battery status for your lock screen. And let's see, you can add slider shortcuts. So the way that you would do that is just select an application for the particular slider shortcut. And we'll go with Google so that we can have Google now from our lock screen. And then we'll just save that. Now if we go to the lock screen, we should be able to slide up. And that'll take us directly to Google now. If we go into themes, this is the theme chooser. It will allow you to apply any signage in my tent or AOKP theme from Play Store on the fly, which is pretty cool. If we go into the system, there's more customization here. We can customize the status bar. Uh, we can choose to either show the clock or disable the clock, and it works on the fly like that. You can choose to have AM or PM. Uh, you can choose your battery icon. I prefer percentage. You can change your signal style, and you can choose to show the notification count. So whenever your emails come in, it'll show you how many emails have come in. 
Uh, so that's pretty neat. If we go back, our quick settings panel, that would be uh, when we pull down with two fingers, we can actually change the toggles that are on the screen. So we can choose our tiles and layout. We can choose to add whatever kind of toggles that we'd like to add. Uh, we can remove those as well. We can add screenshot to our power menu. We can change the clock widget. So here we can change the weather panel. And we can also choose whether or not to have calendar events. We can activate custom actions for our hardware keys. Let's see guys, one other thing that I forgot to mention here, uh, you do have developer options and you do have performance settings. Uh, the way that you'll access that is go to about phone and you'll go down to the build number and just click on that until it shows that you have developer settings. Uh, so you will have your developer options and also your performance settings. From here you can change your processor governor from performance settings, you will be able to set a CPU governor. Uh, there's a few to choose from here. And I, you cannot change your maximum CPU frequency. Uh, for now, there's no overclocking here. That will be built into the kernel later on. So we're just on maybe the fifth nightly build. So as this is developed, we will be able to change the maximum CPU frequency. There's not really a huge need to overclock. Uh, the phone is already running amazingly fast especially on CyanogenMod 10, 10.1 uh, I should say, so there's really no need to overclock the CPU anyhow, uh, but you have all your performance settings, so that's a pretty neat feature. And one other thing that I forgot to mention here that I'll mention real quick is we do have our CyanogenMod wallpapers, so those are always fun. And that's about all for the customizations. Uh, there's not a ton of customizations in CyanogenMod 10, just enough to kind of make this ROM your own without overloading it with uh, features. It's just a clean install of stock Android on devices that normally would not be able to support stock Android. So a uh, big shout out to Spryson for getting this working on our phones. Um, this includes all of the 4.2 features like uh, your carousel on the lock screen, the 4.2 keyboard, the 4.2 camera, uh, just all of your 4.2 applications that you would get from stock Android are here. Uh, so anyways, guys, that has been Sinajamod 10.1, Android 4.2.1 for the Verizon Galaxy Note 2. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more coverage on the Verizon Galaxy Note 2 and several other devices that I cover. Uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter at DroidModerX. You can find more from me at DroidModerX.com where I'll have the latest in Android and tech news. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. That he has accomplished an incredible feat. He has gotten his version of Cyanogen My 10 for the Galaxy Note 2 stable.